As a fishing programme maker, I've had the privilege of working with some of the best anglers in the world. And over the years, I've been able to glean a lot of good information from the top players of our game. Not everyone wants to be a serious match angler or a world champion. Most angling is for pure pleasure. A release of the hunter-gatherer instinct that lies within us still, despite thousands of years of so-called development. But there's an awful lot that the beginner and indeed experienced pleasure angler can learn from the serious match anglers and world champions. The king, of course, is, of course, the legendary Bob Nudd. Four times world champion and an NBE to boot. Over the years, I've made about 20 programmes with Bob, and it has to be said, he's my favourite presenter. We fine-tuned both our areas of expertise to produce between us some pretty good fishing TV. But there's a reason why our Robert is king. He is still, despite all the triumphs, accolades and tributes, absolutely mad keen dedicated to the art of catching fish. When we finish the programme, and the crew is stiff, tired and stuffing various bits of equipment back into the trucks ready to head for a pint, pie and feet up at earliest, our Bob sighs with quiet, polite relief at the departure of his dictatorial director, slides his famous cap back over his eyes from where I've yanked it to have a better shot of his face for his final close-up, and settles down on his seat for another couple of hours of sheer pleasure. I really ought to discuss his fees with him. He enjoys his fishing far too much to be paid. I've only been fishing about 10 minutes and I'm already catching fish after fish. Don't know what this is. I'm on a fairly light rig. I'll run through that with you later, but... Oh, it's a beautiful rod. I've come today to Taswood Fisheries in Norfolk. And this particular lake is called Kingfisher. What a name. Look at that beautiful golden colour. Lovely, I love the colours of these rudd. And this, this particular lake, as I say, is Kingfisher. Quite small and shallow, but the idea today is to actually teach you how to use a pole. You know, it's sort of like the early use of pole, to teach you how to use a pole correctly. Just slip that one in the net. how to elasticate your pole, all the things that you, you know, when you first begin to use a pole, how to hold a pole, how to feed with a pole, I want to run through all these things. I mean, we've got, we've got a beautiful day, it's, it's early spring, the leaves are not really on the trees yet, but what has happened is there's been a sort of a mini heat wave. In fact, I had to put some cream on, some sun cream on this morning for protection because the sun is so warm. So we've got a beautiful day for filming, and I'm sure I'm going to catch loads of fish, but today it's not all about catching fish, it's about the real techniques and the handling of a pole. Now some people say to me, why do you use a pole? What does it give you? What does it give you over rod and line? Well, one thing it does give you, it gives you 
perfect control over the equipment. As long as the fish are within range, it gives you perfect control. You can use fairly light lines, light rigs, and you can land your float in the same spot every time. So you've got good control. What does happen sometimes, obviously if you've got, if you've got a big fish, a really big fish, a pole is limited. You have, to, you have to gear it down to your elastic you're using. You can lose the odd big fish, but for catching, generally for efficiency, a pole is just so good to use because you're always, this little tiny fish, this one. I'm getting bites every car. This is just a small one. Been getting some really good ones, little, just like a little perch. But a pole will catch you everything. Tiny, greedy perch, look at that. I won't even put him in the net, he's so small. Lovely, lovely, healthy fish. But a pole gives you the real control that you want. I'll talk about my rig later, but what you've got to think about is, is when you're actually shipping out, you need a good pole rest supporting behind you so you can actually run the pole through the roller. So it's really, really smooth, a nice smooth action as it comes through the roller. And then you can get out to exactly the same spot each time. Like that. You can feed as well without any problem. Now holding the pole, and I'll run through it, I will run through it again, but holding the pole, I actually rest the pole on my knee, like that, with my arm on the top. I can actually hold the pole with my knee and my arm and leave both hands free to feed and strike. And I've actually struck then and got a big, a big fish straight away. Don't know what this is, good fish though. But I can also, while I've got that fish on, I can feed if I want to. I've steered it out of the swim and I can feed. Put some maggots out for the next one. Bring this one round. Now there, you can see the elastic doing its job. I've got a new elastic in there. It's a, a number eight. Ooh, see the fish burst then, tried to get away. Number eight elastic, but it's pure latex. Quite soft, number eight, but I can still get biggest fish in. Oh, it's a beautiful rod, look at that. <laughs> this is lovely fishing. Terrific. You have to try and exploit everything when you're fishing. Beautiful golden rod. And that fish took on the drop. As I lifted the bait up, dropped it back in, that fish took. And there, look. Look at the wonderful colours on, on that. Ooh, nearly dropped him. Look at the wonderful colours on that. Beautiful golden rod. Lovely fish. Just a sample of what we're going to be catching today. Be careful, I always try and use your disgorger. The fish is just hooked inside the mouth. There. Lovely fish. Right, once again, shipping out, and I'll just show you that, that position that you need to hold the pole. Use your leg, use the top of your leg there to support your pole. And then your arm, your forearm there on top, and you can actually hold the pole without any hands. You can hold it like that. I can strike by just lifting my knee up, I can strike at the end there and hook a fish. And of course then when you want to feed, you've got two hands free. So you can pick your catapult up like that, and I don't even have to look. I know where my bait is. You can actually pick maggots or pellets, whatever you want in there. Everything is done in reverse. You actually hold the pouch of the catapult still in your right hand and you push the crutch of the catapult forward. So instead of pulling the catapult back, you push it forward and release just the same as you would. So there, just push it and release. And all the bait then flies out exactly where you want. And you're ready then. If you want to strike with your leg, which I did, struck with my leg, and there's a big fish on straight away. So you can do everything. Now I'm fishing, at the moment, I'm fishing at 13 metres. It's quite, oh dear, I lost, I don't know what that one was. It's quite a good fish. At the moment, I'm fishing at 13 metres. 
which is quite a way out, but you don't have to fish that far out. You know, I've, I've actually think I'm going to finish up at about 11 metres, which is a good length for pole fishing. 10 or 11 metres on these sort of commercial fisheries is perfect. You know, there's, there's no problem. And an 11 metre pole these days doesn't cost you a lot of money. You can get one for 100 pounds, good quality, that you're able to fish with. The most important thing is, is, is make sure, you know, when you go to buy a pole, make sure you can actually hold it and that you can actually fish with it at that length. You know, you can, if you buy a pole without even seeing it, then you go to pick it up and it's very soft and bad action, and it's no good, you've wasted your money. So go and look at the pole, pick it up and think, can I fish with this? And if you can, then buy it. So it's just a matter of constant feeding and already I can see one or two fish swirling. The float goes and I'm straight into a fish. Just a good steady strike, not too hard because this is shallow water. These are lovely fish, they're rud. See that elastic, just it's pure silicon, just doing its job. Reasonably powerful, I, I, you know, I could hook a big tench or a big bream, so I've, I've had to use fairly reasonably elastic. Oh, look, that is a beautiful roach. Look at that, beautiful half pound roach. I've only got single maggot on at the moment, single maggot on the hook, just to catch some fish, you know, to get some things going. As I said, it's not really about catching fish today, it's showing you how to feed, how to strike, and, and you do obviously need to catch some fish to get that. But that is, if I can turn that to camera, that is just gorgeous and so beautiful looking. Look at the red maggot just out of its mouth. Gorgeous looking roach, beautiful fish. Only on a 20 hook, little barbless hook, but man, what a fish. Lovely half pound roach, gorgeous. I know we're gonna have a good day. I'm just using a single maggot, single red maggot on the hook, just to catch some fish. You notice I'm using a pole clip there which secures the pole, stops it blowing out of the roller, keeps it still while you're fishing. And also, you notice I've got a little bullet nose joint there. Just makes for easier when you're shipping on, and it also protects the pole. It doesn't come as part of the pole, this one is a Drenum one, and I actually push it in and super glue it but, it, but it does keep that area there easy and stiff and clean. And if you drop your pole in the water, it floats, it doesn't sink. Now when you're shipping out, just you want a, a nice smooth action. You're using the roller, okay, you're using the roller to, to, to run the pole. And just hold your hand here and just slide the pole over your left hand. So you slide the pole through. By the time it gets to or off the roller, it should be well balanced. And when you get to the end of your cast, as you, as you get to the end, just before you get to the end of your pole, lift your pole up. Don't just drop your pole in water, just lift it up and lay. If you actually lift your pole up and then lay the bait on the water so it lays smoothly and drops naturally. And then you're in full control and ready once again. Trap that pole with your knee. I'm, all the time, I'm not looking in there, I'm not looking in my bait box. All the time, I'm watching. I've got a bite, got a fish, fed all in one movement and then you can bring it around and once again smooth let the elastic do the work just glance behind you now and again get it on that roller as soon as you can and then just once it's resting on the roller then it's super smooth back through your hands ready just a smallish roach but it's still all right it's a nice fish and i'm going to lift this one it's only two or three ounces but just lift that fish everything's nice and smooth the unshipping I actually, you can wrap your, I wrap my arm under the pole so it leaves you free to unhook the fish. And just a, a lovely, lovely little roach. Let's have a look at the rig that I've started with. And I actually want to show you how to set up a rig, but, but to begin with, I want to show you exactly what I'm doing today. This doesn't apply everywhere, of course, but in this situation, I'm using a fairly small hook. It's a, a two-bertini, 808, 
It's a size 20, fairly wide gate, but I can use either single or double maggot. Decided just to spark the swim off quickly, you know, get some feed with maggots and get some fish into the peg, and then before I go on to pellet. And fairly light hook length. That is an 010 hook length. 010, 010, it's brown in center tan. 10 inch hook length, going up to a very small shot there, a number 11 shot. That's just a dropper shot. So look, it's, it's fairly shallow and I'm dropping the bait through the water. Just below that shot, if you can see it there, I've got a four turn water knot. So neat, but very, very strong knot. I'm not gonna get broken on that. And if we move further up, I've got a little bunch of number nine shot there. Can you see them? Seven shot. It's like that's the bulk of the weight. It's up towards the float, but it just to steady everything, and then I've got a slow drop below it. And then going up to the float itself, which is 0.4 of a gram, it's a Drennan, it's called a Drennan pinky float. 0.4 of a gram. It's got a carbon stem, a lovely light float, this one. Really one, particularly one of my favourites. Got a cane bristle that you can see, a reasonable size cane bristle that you can see if you're fishing at distance. My main line is 012. It's a browning senatan again. So fairly strong 012 is like two and a half pound breaking strain. So reasonably strong. Even though we're catching silverfish, could hook a tench, could hook a big fish. And then going further up, to the actual tip, and the elastic, which I told you earlier, it's a one mil elastic. It, it's, you'd call it between a six and an eight elastic, but it's pure silicon. You see that, it's white, it's pure silicon, latex, it's very, very soft. Very, very soft, and it will stretch. And I've got it through the top three sections of the pole, so a good distance. But if I hook a big fish, I know I can get it out with this elastic. So I've got a little bit of a, but when, you, when you're hooking small fish, it's still coming out, so you're not bumping fish. So it's a, a, a good, happy medium. Fishing for normal size fish, like half pound fish, this is ideal. But if you hook a big fish, you can still get it in. I want to show you now exactly how to set up one of these pole rigs. Now I normally set up all my pole rigs at home, but I thought I'd show you on the bank exactly how I do it. You need your main line to begin with. And what I do then is have the main line, the spool of main line, and I've already done this for you. I've actually threaded the float on there. This is a 4x14 Drenham Pinky, and you'll notice I've got three sleeves on there, three silicon sleeves. That's just add it. If one of those goes, you've always got two left. If you've only got two on there and one goes, you're down to one and it can slip. So it just, just holds it tight on there. Now, if you can, if you've got a float sort of under half a gram, try to use shots. You're allowed legally to use shot below, eight, number eight and below. So that's legal. And if you can, use lead shots. This is a high tech line and you can easily damage it by using non-toxic shots. So I tend to use small lead shots. I've already put, if you can see, I've already put one, two, three, four, five, six of those shots on the line. So I put the shots on the line and I have a big tall jar which I actually have in my room and I just check to see. Now these shots I put on, so what I do, I pick up a shot, put it on the line and try not to, to bite it on. Use, I use a little pair of stainless steel style pincers that I've got. You actually get the shot on the line, you probably can't see that, but once I get it on you'll be able to see the style pincers. So that I actually grip the the shot there, right, with my hand. Pick up the pincers. You need to just, I also put a bit of moisture on there as well. Use the style pincers just to squeeze on the shot. Like that. You can actually get the tension exactly right. Now once you've put those shot on, what happens is sometimes they damage the line. So you want to then move those shots completely out of where you've pinched them on. Move them all, move them out of the way, move them up the line. So the bit that you've actually worked when you've pinched the shot on, I've moved all those seven shots out of the way and off of that 
it could be a damaged area. So I've moved that, then your hook length, then you actually check, check your flow, add another one, deduct another one, then you can, and I'll show you how to do that later on in the program, how to tie a four turn water knot and that'll be the hook length and, and the dropper shot. So basically that's it. Your main line, your flow on, put your shot on with a pair of style pincers so you can actually feel the pressure on. Try if possible to use these small shots and then everything is okay, you don't damage the line. That's enough of the technical talk. Let's catch some more fish. If you watch and see how that pole comes off the roller, and I'll show you exactly how to position it later on, but see how dead smooth it is, it doesn't jolt because I've got it balanced perfectly. And then when you get to the end, we call this shipping out, when you get to the end of your shipping out, you lift the pole up and you lay the line on the water so it lays dead level. Don't drop it down, you'll tangle the rig so it lays out dead level, then watch for the bite, bang, you're into a fish. Look at that, as easy as that because they're taking it on the drop. I've been putting a little bit of loose feed in, even while I've been chatting, I've been feeding, so this is not a particularly big fish, not bad. A little roach, I think. Pole clip at the front, look, you can let go of your... This comes a roach. I'm just going to net this one, it's only a, probably a two or three ounce fish, but I will just net it. Lovely little fish. It's all action, it's lovely. You know, as soon as I've unhooked this one, back out again. Just caught inside the mouth, but only just inside, so use your disgorger. Just unhook it. So easy. Little tiny roach, probably two and a half ounces, but look at that. Beautiful condition. Single maggot on the hook. It's so easy because every time it goes in, the float goes under. Single maggot on the hook, they're away. Nice and smooth, shipping out. Let that pole just slide across the bottom of your hand. Pushing it really with your right hand, that gives you the force. And then when you get to the end, just a nice, gentle laying in the water. You can feed. Actually, I missed a bite. I can't believe that feed, but I've fed. And when I've fed, I've actually lifted the float out. And this is why a pole is so brilliant. I've lifted it out and it's gone through again and I'm into a good fish. Shut off that one. What you do is you fool fish. You see, I fed, all those fish came in. This is a good stamp fish, this one. This is when this stronger elastic works. Look at that lovely fish. But as I fed, even though I missed a bite, I just dropped it straight back in, but I'd fed. All the fish were then coming up after that loose feed. And fishing is all about feeding. And this one, this big one, probably one of the craftier fish, shot straight in after those loose offerings. My hook was there as well. Lovely elastic there, that number eight elastic. Oh, this is a beautiful, I don't know what it is, beautiful fish. Maybe a big crucian carp, this. Lovely fish. But you see that elastic will catch these bigger fish. Oh, beautiful crucian. Look at that, fooled by those maggots dropping through the water. That is a lovely fish. Oh, beautiful fish. And it's non-stop action. <laughs> that was there, actually whizzing in. So strong as well. Oh, just. Oh. Look at that. Look at the colours and it's so strong. But that was there, coming up in the water. It took it on the drop as I dropped that bait back in. Absolute perfect condition. Just over a pound. Beautiful crucian carp. If you notice where I've set that pole roller, it's where it it balances the pole while it's just holding the clip. Now, when I get to the end of the runoff, ideally, as the pole comes off the roller, it wants to be just about perfect balance in your hand so you don't get any up and down movement. So balance, position your pole roller carefully, 
once again just get to the end of as you ship out, lay the pole on the water, feed, feed quickly today because you know the bites are, are just instant as you feed and once you've fed, and because this is the advantage of a pole, you can actually lift the pole up and drop it through your feed. The feed that you've just fed, lift the pole up, drop it through, and quite often this will fall fish. There it goes, a little dig then immediately as fish come in for the bait, and there it goes. You can do this as many times as you want. Of course, with rod and line, you have to come all the way in again, and there it goes. <laughs> That fish actually come out of the water then. Struck a bit hard on that one. And then as you go back, as you get back onto the roller, just check, once the pole's on the roller, then you don't need to look behind anymore. You need just a glance as it's going back into the clip, and that's held there. I think I can just about lift this fish, although it's a three or four ounce roach, lovely fish. I can just about lift that one. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. But it's all about technique, it's all about feeding and movement. And then you can have a really enjoyable day. Another big roach in the net. <laughs> oh, it's another, oh, it's a big fish. This is when that, that number eight elastic does work. You know, if you're catching smaller fish and then suddenly you've got a slightly bigger one. There is some quality fish in here. This really, truly is a wonderful fishery. Lovely, but the, that elastic tames them. It's one of these, hey, I love it, because I just don't know what fish I'm going to catch next. I've had some lovely roach, rudd, crucian. What's this? I don't, oh, it could be another crucian carp, I think. Elastic's doing its job. I can tell it's a crucian, because they actually bore down. Oh, lovely fish. <laughs> Do you know what? This is just a real pleasure to be here. It's beautiful. Lovely sunny day. Yeah, it's certainly lovely. Another cruising carp. You can see that red maggot. Just a single red maggot. They don't always need big baits for these fish. Single red maggot just out of its mouth. And a beautiful fish. Oh, another pound plus crucian. And when you've got reasonable gear on, you know, it, it, um, they're, they're just so much better. This, this fairly fine elastic, they fight well. I'm holding this fish pretty firmly. You have to, they're all muscled. Look at that, probably a pound and a half, that one. Beautiful fish. I'm holding it fairly firmly, because they, but they're a tough fish. Just hooked there. How about that, eh? Really, truly wonderful, wonderful fishing. day for fishing. So easy. Nice and smoothly out with the pole. I can see the odd fish rising. You know, as I feed, I can see it. So I know some of them are taking the bait off the top. Feeding. And immediately, oh, little, this is a little one. <laughs> little tiny fish. Sometimes when fish are a really small like this. You obviously don't need to net them. You can just you just check the size of it carefully and swing just swing them in. It's better actually not to net them. These little tiny fish like this, you can just swing it to hand. And the fish is quite small, only an ounce, and I'm not I'm not gonna put it in the net. Beautiful, beautiful, sort of perfectly formed, but just get him straight back in the water. I can't believe that those little fish are getting into this big fish out there because I can see them swirling. But obviously as I've fed and fed and fed, there's more and more fish. Notice that nice and smooth pole out of the clip. The pole is well balanced as it's coming through. It's so easy, I mean, I can fish like this for 10 hours, no problem. There, use the knee, use the knee a lot to balance the pole. Use your leg your arm straight away into a fish. I actually struck with my knee again. <laughs> it's quite shallow so the fish come to the top. 
Then as you're shipping around with a the pole, then keep the tip down, watch behind you. As soon as the pole's on that rest behind you, then you can sort of relax and just slide it back, then only watching the fish. Keeping the pole tip down, I'm going to have to net this one because it's a nice, nice roach. Just slip the net under that one. Just a lovely little roach. But it's continuous. You know, every time you go in, there's another fish. That's a beautiful little, probably three ounce roach, but lovely fish. And that is pole fishing. It's The pole is such, I know it sounds strange really, but it's so efficient. You can use very, very light lines. You can always fish exactly in the same spot each time. And as long as everything is set up, you, you just don't get any tangles. You've got elastic to act as a shock absorber, so you can use fairly light, high-tech lines. And you can also, it's just so easy to feed and to get the fish. I mean, it is regular feeding that gets the fish there and straight away onto another big fish. <laughs> it's so good. I say big fish, it's probably just a nice roach, this one. But it's, you know, it's just good fun. It's another lovely roach. <laughs> just fantastic, because as soon as I go out, I'm catching a fish, every time. As soon as I go out, I'm catching a fish, sometimes a big crucian, sometimes a roach. Every time I go out, it's a fish. Just wonderful fish. Elasticating a pole is something that a lot of anglers are frightened of. And you shouldn't be because it's so easy to do. And I want to run through exactly how I do it. And, and if you take these sort of few simple steps, you'll find it's okay, it's quite easy. Start with the bush. You have to bush. The kit I've got here is a top two carp kit. It's equivalent to a normal top three on a, on a, on a standard pole. And if you can just see that bush there, that's an internal bush. I like to use these because if you can imagine if you use an external bush, your line can get caught behind it quite easy. But there, can you see how smooth that is? Nothing can get caught. These are the bushes that I use. They are Preston. They're called Slip. They're a PTFE bush. And on the back, it actually tells you what size bush for what size elastic. You need to cut your pole back. Now, it's carbon, fairly fragile. And, well, this is, is what they call a a needle file, a knife edge needle file, and that's, that's better than trying to, a hacksaw is far too abrasive, you know, far too abrupt. But this is nice and fine, but it doesn't take long, and you can actually cut the pole to length quite easy with that. I bought a whole set of these, you know, you, you know your local market store, bought a whole so, set of these for, I think, two quid. It was about 10 different ones, so, and this lasted me forever, those. Once you've got your bush in place, you push the bush in, and I actually just super glue it. That's all it needs, just super glue it in. It wants to be a good tight fit in there. Push it in, super glue it, it doesn't move, and that's for the elastic to slide round. So that's the bush end done on your top section, and you vary that depending on your elastic size. This one is perfect for a number 10 elastic, which I'm going to use. You need also then to make a bung for the end, the end of the second section in this case. Now this is, if you have a look at that, there is a, an actual, like a little winder on there. This is called an adjuster bung. This enables you to adjust the elastic, tighten it up if you're catching big fish, slacken it off if you're catching small, so you can do whatever you want, so it enables you to adjust the elastic. Normally, and what, what happens is they come bigger than this over length, but you can see all these little grooves in here, those grooves, and you can use, what I use is just a Stanley knife to cut this down to length. It must go inside the pole. Bear in mind, now look at that, look at the end of your pole there. Your next section, your number 
three or four joint which goes in there must go up inside there. So you've got to get this piece to go up inside as well. So I've cut this to length just so it probably goes up five or six inches in inside this pole there. I've already cut that one to length for you. but So that there, the bung, the adjuster bung is the right size. We've done the tip. So that's, that's the start of it. You must, this is one thing you must have for elastic. It's called a diamond eye threader. A diamond eye threader. And of course it explains itself. It's just a piece of wire with, if you can see that, a diamond eye which you can slip your elastic through. You can put your elastic through that diamond eye threader and it grips it. It will actually grip the elastic if you push it through there and pull, can you see how it grips that elastic there? So you can then thread this wire down the pole. You need to start threading from the bush end, just pushing the wire through. And because it's wire, of course, because it's fairly stiff, you can thread that through, just whiz it through as quick as you can until you see the wire just coming out of the other end. Once it comes out the other end, of course, you can then, there it comes out already, I'll just show you that now. You can just see it coming out of this end. So you can now then pull through. You've got that diamond eye, which has got a grip on the elastic, just pulls that elastic through so easily. Like that, first section through. You've now got to do the same on the next piece. This is easier because of course it's much bigger. So on the, this carp section there, this will be the second section, just whiz that through. Same thing, push it through and get that, all that elastic through. Pushing the wire through again, it makes it so much easier, this wire, this threader. Repeating exactly the same as you did before where you, you actually push this through, pull it, Need a bit more room to work there now. Pull it through. And as you're pulling it through, you need then just to put those two sections there. Just put them together. Just put them there together so that it then comes through smoothly. You've got the two bits together. Now you've got elastic out now at one end, at the tip end, and elastic here. This is the bit at the bottom that you do first. You can discard now. You finish with the wire. Now you need the bush. And this, this bush, it's got loads of holes in it, look. See all those holes? Well, on these adjuster bushes, see this, this hole here? This one right, let's have a look, at the back there. If I can show it to camera there. It's the one just above that adjuster bung. That's the one that you tie your elastic to. And this is such a simple knot. This is why I wanted to show it to you. You need just to loop the elastic round the adjuster bung and then just do a normal granny knot, just a normal loop. Always wet, whenever you're working with anything, especially with elastic, wet that elastic a little bit. Just form a loop with your hand, you see that? And bring this bush back through so that you get just a normal, ordinary, just a normal, ordinary granny knot there. Can you see that? Pull it just a reasonably tight, just so it starts to dig, and then finish it off by getting hold of the tag there and the elastic there, and then pulling it, pulling it down. That then will be, it sort of, because it's elastic, it digs into itself. But always just give a real check like that to make sure it's not slipping. Look, um, that elastic is bottoming out, the knot's not slipping. So there you are, that can be then trimmed off with a pair of scissors. Just trim that piece off. You can leave a little, leave a little bit of, of it on if you want. So just trim that elastic like that. Now you need to put, just put a few turns. This is an adjuster bung. So you need a little bit of insurance there, just for how, so just, I wind probably five or six turns round this bung, like that. 
and then put it under. So there's, there's five or six turns on there. I can either add a few more on or take a few off before I do it. And then I'll pull that bung, that then pull the elastic at the other end and that will pull that bung up inside there. Just get this elastic right and it'll pull that bung up inside. I need to come back to this tip end now just to pull this elastic. So that bung now comes up inside the pole, settles where it should do. And this is the real secret. This is a Bob Nudd secret. If ever, you've ever been fishing and you do all this elastic, if you can do it, and you go out and your first big fish you hook, there's a load of elastic hanging out of your pole. The reason is you haven't pre-stretched the elastic. You need to do that before you put this bush on the end. Just form a loop, ordinary loop, granny knot, anything. I'm not going to tie it yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this loop to pre-stretch that elastic. Pull that, pull it tight so that knot doesn't slip. Like that. You got that? Trim it off. Just going to trim that elastic off there. And then this is uh, this is my party piece. You've got to hook this. I usually hook it on my garden gate, but I haven't got my garden gate here, so I hook it around anything and then walk with it and pre-stretch it. Just like a big fish is going to take your bait, you've got to do that. You've got to stretch this elastic, walk with it, hook it around anything. I think I'm going to use a bit of my box down here. Let's have a look. Perhaps if I hook it around there, that should hold it. And I can then walk with this and that's like a fish. That's like your first fish, but you walk with it and walk and walk until you feel the elastic just bottom out. And then you just keep pulling and pulling. And this is where my neighbors start looking at me as I walk out of the garden gate. So you're pulling until you feel that elastic just start to bottom out. Once you get to that point where you just feel it, you've then pre-stretched it. So you've pre-stretched it and you can come back and you can see already, I mean that elastic was quite tight and you can see now how it's hanging out there, that's a bit of loose because I've pre-stretched the elastic so I've actually used it. All that remains then is just to tie the bush on this end and sort of You've got a little bit, you can adjust the bung there so you can make it a little bit tighter or a little bit looser. It doesn't matter because you can, you can adjust it. And I use a normal, these are good connectors. These are Preston, this is a Carp Extra. That's what I would normally use, one of those, just to, just to do it, to tie it up. Trim off that, you need to cut this piece. We don't want this piece on here now. Elastic sticking out. With these connectors, you need to thread, there's a small yellow piece which you need or whatever color it'll be, you need to thread that on first. And then you've got the connector itself. You've got a little hole there. Thread the elastic through that hole. And then, then you've got to think of the tension. Before you tie it, just feel the tension on the elastic. Think, oh, let's do that a bit more. Let's do that a bit more. Mm, that feels about right. So keep your fingers on there. Do the same knot as you did before. Wet the elastic first. I'm wetting my fingers. Wet the elastic first. Do that same, just a normal granny knot. What's happening is this is elastic. It digs into itself. It doesn't cut through like line. So you can. it's okay to use a normal granny knot on there. Just pull it down fairly tight. Fairly tight. Get a hold of that loose end. Pull it pull it, pull it. As you're pulling it, it will dig in. It will dig in like that. Then test it. Then really test it. Pull it. Not slipping at all. No problems. Done as easy as anything. Clip off the excess. Underneath. Elastic sometimes hard to cut through, isn't it? And then just push this bottom piece of the bung up. like that, and there you have it, perfectly elasticated. You've got a piece on here where you can just hook your line, but 
perfectly elasticated slipping back. I also use lubricant as well before I start to fish, but because elastic, it's rubber, it's like the car tyres that you've got. It doesn't really want to slip over anything, does it? So there you are. Perfect elastic every time. That was a long piece of technical showing how to elasticate a pole, but I do need to show you one more knot, which I think is the most important one. This is the knot that you use to attach your rig to the actual pole connector, and it's called an overhand loop. All you do is you take your main line at the end, you double it over. Now everybody knows that you must make a loop, most people do the wrong one. Just double it over like that, and then form a loop with your hand. So, in effect, you've got that. You see that okay? This loop here then, now this is called a figure of eight overhand loop. You need to get this loop, take it away from you, and pull it round the back. So get the loop, take it away from you. You actually grip it again with your finger and your thumb, and tuck it back through there. And then you're left, can you just see that figure of eight? That if you look at it and you've got that, then you know you've done the knot correctly. Just wet the knot, a little bit of water, spit in this case, pull it tight, and that is the knot that you need to use. It's a really strong knot, and pull that as hard as I want, it won't break. If you do a normal granny knot, it will break first time. And then all you need to do is just trim off that little piece of surplus there. And you've got an absolute perfect knot. What happens with knots is the line cuts into itself and it makes it much, much weaker. So you just need to trim that off. Scissors are a bit blunt, like that. And there you have the perfect loop done. That's the one to use for your pole rigs. And now let's get back to the fishing. Now this lighter rig is working really well. What I've done was when I plumbed up, I set it, it's about four foot deep, and I set it about two inches off and straight away into a fish. I set it about two inches off bottom, you know, not exactly on bottom. You can imagine if a fish is swimming round, you know, my maggot would, would be dead level with its nose. This is a little one I can swing this. Just loads of these small fish. I think, we'll have another little go with this, but I think I'm going to go onto some bigger baits and try and catch some bigger fish. I'm getting pestered now with these, like, two and... It's lovely to be pestered with two and three ounce roach, but I'm going to have a little gamble and show you how to use a pole cup, how to feed with it, and, and perhaps how to use a bigger rig and bigger baits to the sun and everything is against us because it's right in the sky now, it's midday, but I'm sure we'll be able to catch some big fish on a heavier rig. I just this is my last ship out with this lighter rig. Lay it, just lay the rig on the water. Float goes immediately. Can't not not get a bite. <laughs> If you miss a bite, just go straight back in. Just drop it straight back. These rud and everything, look at that, look at that float. A fish actually topped right on my, right against my float. You can lay it on the water, watch. I'm not feeding now, I'm just gonna let you see how long it takes for that float. There it goes, bump, another fish. That one flicked off because it was so small. What happens though, if the maggot gets damaged too much, then you only will get fish to, sort of small fish to take it. To fool the big ones, you know, you really want a proper maggot on the hook. So don't, don't repeat it too many times with a damaged maggot. See, there's another smallish fish there. I think it's about time that we just tried that slightly larger rig, bigger bait, maybe two or three maggots on the hook or pellet. Another little one of these, these small ropes that you can swing into hand, but I mean, it's great fishing. Every cast, there's a bite. I think it's about time. I'm not going to put that in the net. It's about time to catch some bigger fish. To target these bigger fish, we need to put some feed in. Now, earlier, 
before I started to fish. I thought I'd put a couple of cupfuls of pellet in. Now, cupfuls, this is a pole cup and it's absolutely brilliant for feeding. If you think about it, this section that I've got here is exactly the same length as my top three kit that I'm fishing with. So when I deposit food, if I put it on the end of the pole, deposit food into the water, it's exactly where I'm fishing. And I've already put two potfuls in, I thought just to let something rest on the bottom, but it's been a little while now, so I'll put some more in, just to show you how I feed. Now I'm putting these, now these pellets I'm feeding with today, they're three mil Vandenine fish meal pellets. They're for feeding only, not for putting on the hook. But you can see this cup, this is a 240 milliliter cup. Look how many you can get in there. Loads of bait. You wouldn't believe it, but once you, even though they're fairly light, once you put a lot in, the pole actually bends. A little bit of sweet corn on top, just in case. It's, it's always a good idea to have a change. And maybe fish with pellet, maybe fish with corn. Now I'm going to deposit that, and I've actually come in a little bit as well. Come in one section, sort of 11 metres. Sort of 10 or 11 metres is a nice, wherever you're comfortable. I mean, seven or eight if you're comfortable, will catch you fish. I'm going to ship that out, and once again, be as smooth as you can when you're shipping out. You've got to watch you don't get any jerky movements. If you jerk the cup and it flies up in the air, then you lose all the content. So it's important to keep your eye and you can see the pole, the, the pole cup itself is fixed at the top. That makes it much, much easier to balance. I know the earlier ones came out and they were actually fixed at the bottom and it, it really was a hard job, but try and keep this smooth to keep it and stop it from tipping. Keep this nice and smooth as you go out. Can you see how that pole is just bending a bit? Now, I'm gonna put this in, as I say, about a metre, metre and a half short of where I was fishing with the maggot. Make a bit of a noise when it goes in, about a foot above the water, and drop the contents, sort of shake them in, so it makes a bit of a noise. That helps to attract fish. As I hear that splashing, but that is exactly over where you're fishing. An absolutely brilliant way of feeding particles very, very accurately. One should be enough, as I said, because I put some in earlier. It just depends on your bites. I mean, if you're catching big fish and getting bites every cast, then every time you catch a big fish, you can put another pot in. It's just depending how the fish are responding. The more bites you're getting, the more you can feed. And I'm gonna loose feed a little bit over the top of that. But I should think there should be some big fish waiting for this sort of larger bait that I'm going to use. I thought I'd try one of these smaller, this, these are abandoned expander pellets, three mil. I thought I'd try one of those first. I can actually almost bury that hook completely. They're super soft. I've actually got some super scopex additive in those, but it's quite a small pellet on that hook. I'll chat about the rig later. Just gonna have a look and see if any fish have arrived on that close. It's a little bit closer in, only about a metre and a half in where I've been feeding the maggot. Get rid of this pole section here. Just drop the pellet, lay it on the water again, where we've just cupped in. Now there's a fair volume of feed there, so sometimes it takes a little while for the fish, they back off and then they come back in again, but there's a fair volume of feed there. Still just gonna spray a few maggots, a few maggots, why should I say maggots, a few pellets over the top. Not many. Just an odd little noise, just to try and keep fish coming in all the time. It's very, very warm today, and I think even though this is oh, straight in, look at that. <laughs> A big fish straight away, that's incredible, isn't it? Just a change of tactic. Little one of those three mil Super Scopex pellets. It looks like a big bream. Now I've got heavier elastic on now. I've got a number 10 elastic through three sections. Still reasonably soft, but able to handle these sort of fish. 
That was incredible. I just potted that big load of bait in there. A small pellet, three mil Vandenine expander pellet, super scopex additive, the bream lover. Look at that. Can you believe that anything could work so well and so quickly? But look how it's tamed. Look how that elastic has tamed. This bream's two and a half pound. Look how that elastic has tamed it. Lovely conditioned fish though. <laughs> What a great start. A great start to catching big fish, I mean, of course, because we've already had a fabulous day. Yeah. That's a bream of soup. That noise of those pellets going in, dropping it on, and within probably 15 seconds, a float slides away, and bang, a big bream. Another one of these bream on that pellet. Really settled on that bed of pellets that I've put in there. Now I said I'd up the rig a bit. Now I'm using quite a heavy mainline, 015. I've changed the float I'm using. It's called a Drennan Carp 5. It's a big, strong float. I've increased the hook size to a size, yeah, love the lovely bream. Size 16, it's a Tubertini 808, so it's a big hook. The float's half a gram, and the hook length's sort of about four pounds, so it's very, very strong rig to match up with the elastic. It's probably a bit too strong. I mean, this is a bream of about a pound. It's only just hooked inside the mouth. Lovely. But it really took that pellet straight down. They love pellets. Non-stop action. Another one of these bream, they've really come in over them pellets. <laughs> this is a big one too. <laughs> Lovely fish this. That's been good, it just shows you what can happen once you change your bait. You know, we were catching those rod and so that really does tame it, that elastic. We were catching rod and roach and good quality fish, but as soon as we change that bigger bait, that heavier gear, <laughs> and it's a bream. It's a good one too, it's a lovely one to, I think it's a lovely one to finish on. <laughs> Biting hard as well. <laughs> that is a beaut. Oh, it's got to be well over. Well over three pound, that one, I should think. Well over. Look at that. What a wonderful fish to finish on. Beautiful fish. Let's have a look and see what we've caught. This is just a terrific day on the pole, you know, and we're only doing the starter pole, but probably 20, 25 pound of fish, all sorts, rud, everything. Oh, lovely. And if you've just follow those simple things that I've told you today, just a few simple rules, a few basic rules, you too can enjoy catches like that on the pole. really wasn't a bad day's work. There were some good tips in there. If you've enjoyed the programme, why not join me again, Liam Dale and four times world champion Bob Nudd as we start waggler fishing. Can you afford to miss it?